good afternoon everyone and i would say i would like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity i will be presenting on uh, the complications in spine surgery especially on the misplaced uh, uh, pedicle screws the percentage of rate of uh, misplaced pedicle screws in the cervical uh, can range from 5.3% to 19.5% while that the thoracolumbar pedicle screw malpositions varies from 1.2% to 6.65% uh, Recently, two reviewers have documented the malpositioning rate of pedicle screws averaged at uh, about 15% by uh, freehand uh, technique. Why it's so important is uh, one is the in the patient's uh, perspective and the outcome of the surgery. The second one is on the medical legal impact. A retrospective analysis of uh, 68 uh, closed medical legal cases related to misplaced pedicle screws in spine surgery by neurosurgeons and orthopedic surgeons, so equally uh, named as uh, defendants in 32 cases and 31 cases respectively. The cases are uh, most commonly due to misplaced uh, lumbar pedicle screws. That is 41 uh, cases were due to lumbar pedicle screws uh, misplacement. That constitutes to 60.3% of uh, uh, the litigations. This resulted in a huge uh, cost. So this is a, a, a problem not only in the patient safety, but also in terms of medical legal importance. So before moving on to uh, the complications uh, which can arise out of the misplaced pedicle screws and how to solve them, we need to know how the perfect, uh, perfectly placed pedicle screw look like. In the x-rays we can see uh, in the AP views and lateral views uh, and also in the uh, CT scans uh, the perfect positioning of the pedicle screws uh, is important to notice so that you can pick up this small positions uh, post operatively so the most common way of avoiding any uh, preventing any misplacement is by just avoiding the uh, complications for us uh, to do that, we need to know the basic pedicle anatomy. I think we have covered it extensively in the basic course. Uh, but a few points uh, just to uh, remind you, uh, uh, especially on the entry points of the pedicle screws and how the lumbar pedicle screws uh, travels from L1 to L5 and how the sagittal profile of the each vertebral body changes. If you have, if you, if you keep this in mind, so most of the pedicle screw mal placements uh, can be easily avoided, especially when you are trying to use a uh, freehand technique and then post-op post-operatively documented by x-rays and pedicle sizes also you need to uh, have a picture of uh, the size of the pedicles um, in sagittal and coronal uh, directions especially coming to the sacral area we all know the uh, sacral entry points and uh, the direction of the sacral screw and uh, uh, getting a, a tricortical purchase uh, in the sacral screw is very important um, because these sacral screws approximately they go in the 35 to 40 degrees of medial direction and, and um, uh, the prominent leg wings uh, mostly come into uh, the way so this is very important uh, technique or the expertise what we need to gain uh, to uh, avoid misplacement this is a, a tactile sensation or tactile cues what you get while traversing the pedicle is very important so one, once we have done uh, multiple pedicle screws and we are able to prove the pedicle uh, yeah. cannot, you can easily identify the uh, uh, misplacements in the pedicle uh, very easily can be identified uh, and the insertion torque of the screw or uh, passage of a probe can also give us that uh, indications of uh, um, traversing and going out of the pedicle so this tactile sensation has to be achieved uh, before we actually perfect a pedicle screw placement. If you are using a fluoroscopy to put these screws, uh, then the entry points and the starting points and where exactly you are traversing the uh, pedicle is also very important uh, to have, have this in mind. So these are all pedicle screws are dangerously uh, proximal to uh, vital structures. The proximity of uh, neurovascular structures significantly increases the risk of neurovascular complications from screw malpositioning, especially uh, in the apex of the curves if you are using it in a deformed position. There are different ways of uh, classifying them and grouping them. One is the anatomical way of classifying these uh, uh, pedicle uh, breaches or malpositions based on the CTs. 
into group a group b group c and group d depending on how 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 much they are uh, uh, violated the uh, natural uh, cortex of the pedicle so there is one more concept of uh, um, clinically important violations which is more most relevant uh, not as compared to the anatomically uh, oriented classifications those classifications are based on the amount of uh, complications the patient faces so arise of uh, a new onset pain or new onset radiological deficit those were taken into consideration so how where can we go wrong uh, uh, it can it can happen in any direction so in the axial sections this is the if you think this is the perfect way uh, then the medial displacement can cause a neurovascular injury uh, if the if the screw is uh, too long uh, it can uh, hit on to the iota iliac vessels or vena cava uh, depending on the anatomical areas if it is too lateral then uh, the purchase of the screw uh, is affected and also there is a, a problem of uh, injuring the uh, visceral structures or even the exiting nerve roots there in the lateral x-ray if this is the uh, proper adequate placement then the breach of a superior cortex uh, a superior pedicle can cause adjusegment disease or reduced uh, pull out strength and uh, inferiorly directed ones may have lesser purchase and the breach in the pedicle in the inferior inferior breaches uh, significantly uh, uh, in, uh, decreases the yeah, puts the nerve root into uh, tension and problem in the ap view uh, uh, this is the way how a perfect school, perfectly placed pedicle screw can look like if it is too long and crosses the midline then one should suspect there is a uh, breach in the medial cortex uh, or the chance of spinal cord injury is uh, significantly more than 70 percent so that is one way of looking and identifying these deficits uh, and these problems in the intraoperatively coming to the possible uh, complications nerve root or spinal cord injury the most common uh, uh, worry uh, which pu puts a surgeon or a patient uh, uh, into a lot of multiple concerns this can range from 0.6 percent to 11 percent nerve root uh, issues the dural lesions can happen 0.18 percent per pedicle screw and nerve root irritations is 0.19 percent per, per pedicle screw and the transitory set most of the times these uh, irritation these breaches or nerve root impingements are transitory and self-limiting which can cause neuroproxia is a very uh, very common and the permanent neurological deficits are uh, uh, quite uh, rare so a, a neural neurological new onset neurological deficit or a, a new onset post-operative pain requires very careful uh, evaluation to identify the reason for the pain the surgical division is most of the times is necessary a new trajectory within the pedicle uh, can be planned but during the procedure display screw is a, uh, most of the times need to be exposed in such cases uh, you need to have some kind of uh, interoperative guidance so yeah. once you have a misplaced pedicle screw how it can be uh, salvaged uh, in the immediately placed pedicle screw the new track in the same pedicle can be uh, obtained but it creates a, a larger hole inside the pedicle pedicle channel and can lead to insufficient purchase and uh, you may need to put, use a larger uh, diameter salvage screw uh, sometimes uh, the track cannot be uh, perfectly maintained during insertion of the screw those in those situations we need to have a, a cannulated screw to guide the screw uh, into the the new track avoiding the previously put uh, putting track uh, if this is not possible then the, the best way to do that is to skip the level uh, it's quite easy to skip the levels in the thoracic spine but uh, in the lumbar uh, saving levels is very important you need to be uh, very choosy in, uh, in deciding on to the skipping the levels and sometimes you need to extend the levels to one or more levels depending on the purchase what you get so few surgeons have tried uh, putting uh, PMME injections and augmenting the uh, pedicle channel after injecting the cement inside the pedicle channel immediately before the cement consolidates uh, the screws are being put and, and can use the perforated screws or self expanding screws uh, but you should be very careful trying this kind of uh, cement injections in a, a large medial breach 
which can um, uh, lead to the tracking of the cement inside the spinal canal. This can be safely used in the patients where there is a, a superior breach or the lateral breach, uh, but medial breaches and inferior breaches need to be uh, very careful. Avoid the pedicle channel and then go inside the body. So best way to change the uh, direction of this uh, uh, to uh, have it is to uh, use a cannulated uh, screw where you create a new channel, a new track inside the pedicle and then put a, a guide wire and insert the screw maintaining the direction of the screw. So when this is not possible, uh, we use a technique uh, wherein uh, uh, you can see uh, the medially there is a um, is placed a screw, a screw channel and then this uh, pedicle all is there in the new channel. What I am trying to do here is I am trying to block the initially misplaced uh, uh, screw entry so that the new screw entry won't go into the uh, same direction. Most of the times the problem is to maintain the new path so that the screw won't go into the previously uh, put in the path. So using a curved artery and blocking the the wrong hole and using uh, the probes and everything so in the new track and insert the screw maintaining the the block in the uh, wrong direct wrongly directed screw so most of the times so this can uh, help especially you need to block the pedicles uh, during the pedicle screw insertion especially uh, first 20 to 25 millimeters that is the that is the length of the pedicle once uh, the screw crosses that uh, particular length then it enters the body then you can have a uh, the, the process can be maintained the direction of the screw also can be maintained so once you block the screw and then you are happy with the new direction what you need to do is to uh, use the screw uh, uh, use the instrument to block the previous screw previous uh, screw hole either with the suction cannula or with the uh, uh, curved artery and then direct your screw into the the newly uh, inserted, uh, newly uh, developed uh, screw entry. The new onset pain can occur especially while putting a, a sacral screws. When the sacral screw is uh, too lateral and hitting out of the promontory, the traversing uh, route from the L5 uh, gets compressed and patient can develop a new onset L5 radical neuropathy. Uh, this is like a far out syndrome where the root gets compressed on the exiting uh, area. So you need to know that the direction of the roots, uh, especially uh, in the lumbar area, uh, to avoid this uh, problem. The other most devastating problem is the vascular injury. A zygous vein, intercostal arteries, inferior vena cava, iota, and uh, are reported uh, incidences of uh, uh, injuries. Uh, the prompt recognition of this is very uh, important because sometimes it can be uh, fatal as well. A direct uh, vascular suture or embolization is what is required when, the, when you face the problem. And need for uh, whether to replace the screw is not is a controversial issue. They are potentially life and sometimes the limb, limb threatening uh, lesions especially if it ingests the iliac uh, arteries or veins, uh, patient can have a uh, problem uh, with the blood supply in the lower limbs. So how to salvage uh, uh, these kind of uh, situations? Uh, the revision procedure is too risky to taking out the screw and setting the new place is very uh, risky and it's uh, that, that decision is also controversial. A study done by Fox where he found 33 of 680 inserted screws in the thoracolumbar regions uh, to be in contact with the great vessels. Just being in contact uh, may not be issue but, uh, and, uh, but leaving the screw in close contact with the uh, vessel can also have a problems can, which can lead to secondary lesions like lacerations in the future or uh, pseudo aneurysms. Cerebrospinal fluid leaks, uh, if you see the cerebrospinal fluid leak uh, during the insertion, uh, you, should, you should suspect that your screw is uh, too medial or uh, too inferior. Um, most of the times they resolve spontaneously, but if it doesn't, then a direct visualization by laminectomy is necessary. And sometimes you need to uh, suture the leak or uh, Nakashima is uh, used uh, fibrin glue sealant to treat these uh, dural leaks after removing the uh, pedicle screw. But removal of the pedicle screw 
uh, in a medially placed pedicle screw is also risky and sometimes challenging and it can cause or it can again cause a potential neurological injury it should be done under direct visualization after doing a laminectomy and exposing the nerve structures very in very rare situations you may also need to do a durotomy and to safely remove the screw uh, by separating the neural elements from the uh, screw because unscrewing can cause a lot of problems visceral injuries have also been uh, reported uh, the proximity of the thoracolumbar vertebral bodies to visceral organs uh, puts this into uh, potential complications pleural effusions and pneumothorax were quite common uh, they were reported uh, in a significant number. So, a, a too long pedicle screw in thoracic region may potentially injure the esophagus. O'Brien has reported a case of uh, esophageal impingement by because of uh, a T3 screw uh, and which was ident identified in the esophagus copy and there is a, a problem in the mucosal uh, area and these screws uh, need to be uh, uh, revised. And a pedicle fracture uh, because of the misplacement can also happen but this uh, pedicle fracture happens because of the mismatch between the screw size and the pedicle diameter. A pre-operative planning of pedicle diameter and length is, uh, is has to be done uh, very carefully. In a young patients with the hard cancellous bone a tapping can avoid this one. This kind of uh, pedicle fractures can be managed uh, if uh, the screw crosses the pedicle and hold and gets a uh, a decent hole inside the vertebral body this can be safely uh, removed if not uh, <clears throat> then you need to use uh, alternative methods of uh, uh, fixations making the screw hole larger uh, as, uh, as, uh, as, large as the larger diameter of the uh, inserted screw may avoid this kind of complications once the pedicle fracture occurs uh, then you have to choose uh, other alternative techniques so late spinal instability because of misplaced pedicle screw is also common so loss of stiffness of the implant uh, can lead to late spinal instability as a study done uh, wherein the two groups were compared in the group a uh, 16 patients where the screws were correctly placed in group b at least one of the four screws were uh, misplaced and they found out that there is a minor degree of deformity uh, pro uh, correction loss of uh, deformity correction and and you know in a long term uh, follow-up in case of minor misplacement say we need to have a very close radiological and clinical follow-up is very important. So the, although accuracy has been improved uh, to conclude, although accuracy has been improved because of a lot of imaging modalities and techniques, our experience being improved and development of free hand techniques, uh, it's still challenging and the surgeon's knowledge on the anatomical landmarks and uh, a response to visual and tactile cues are very important. Uh, once misplaced pedicle screw has, uh, is identified, then um, you need to keep in mind the salvage techniques and uh, come out of the problem. Thank you very much for your uh,